if you can structure that deal however you want. It's got to be right for you. I think there's got to be a little bit of hurt or um, not hurt, but a little bit of um, monetary transaction from the shareholder to you as an act of good faith and like I'm committed to this. But play the long game. If you can see the benefit in bringing this person on, offer them a 50% discount, offer them a 20% discount, offer them a, a company loan, pay 50% up front and pay the rest off over dividends. Like make it attractive to get that person to buy into your business so that you two can go and, you know, conquer the mountain together. G'day team. Welcome to today's live training. Today I want to talk to you about the process for internal share valuations and I guess some learnings and some things that we're going through with a couple of my clients at the moment in terms of bringing on uh, next gen shareholders into their business. So what I thought I'd do today is kind of just step you through the process if you're not familiar with it, um, but also some of the things that are happening with some of my clients and some of the things that we're exploring totally just so that you can kind of learn and understand um, if you're thinking about this for yourself um, or going through it yourself within your business. So I guess to set the scene or to give some context, you know, internal share valuations, or sorry, in, internal shareholders schemes, so to speak, really, I guess, fundamentally, like, why would you do this? And so why would you bring on next gen shareholders into your business? And so it's not for everyone, but if you're building a business, and so there's a couple of like really key benefits here that I want to talk to you about in terms of bringing on next-gen shareholders. If you're building a business and you, one, don't want to do it on your own, and two, you want to leverage really, really good talent around you, bringing on next-gen shareholders um, is a really good way to kind of leverage talent around you. So you think about it, if you've got some gun kind of team leaders or some, some gun kind of up-and-comers that you can see adding real value if they were to be incentivized through like monetary benefit, dividends, ownership within the business. That is a, that is one of the core reasons why you would bring on next gen shareholders into your business for, for leveraging people's time, attention, and for ensuring that it's not just you that's trying to build this business. All of your shareholders internal within the business are all incentivized to build the business alongside you. So one, it's leverage, it's time, and it's um, building, building a really uh, motivated and empowered team around you. The second reason you would do this is for, for founder exits out of the business. So if you think about, and hopefully you have, if you haven't, hopefully this, this training sparks that within you, have you thought about your exit from the business? Like how are you going to, eventually when you hang up the boots and want to retire out of your business, how are you going to extract the value that you've built into your business? And so there's a number of different ways you can look at doing this. You can, you know, sell to a big corporate. You can sell to someone, sell your business at some point in time. You know, you just come with the the, the golden handcuffs for a certain period of time. You work in their business and then maybe you exit, uh, maybe you retire, what have you. The other option is internal shareholder scheme or an internal shareholder strategy whereby you are bringing on this next generation of shareholders through the business with the plan to eventually, you know, once you want to hang up the boots, eventually sell down your shares, your majority ownership in the business to the next generation of shareholders. And so, you know, business owners who are really, you know, inspired by legacy, they want to see the business live on past past them or, you know, want to, want to build a vehicle whereby they can bring on next-gen shareholders and next-gen shareholders can then take the reins and create amazing wealth for them and their and their families and kind of take over the reins of the business. That's that's when you would do this, this scenario is if you're looking at your exit from the business and you really like the idea of growing, leading, empowering a leadership team um, underneath you to eventually take share ownership within the business to eventually then, you know, once they're ready and once you're once you're ready, to sell down to them and eventually you exit the business or maybe you stay on as an advisory board member or a chairman or something like that. Maybe you retain a short, a small percentage in the business, but essentially then that's your succession planning. That's how you extract the value out of your business. So that's a little bit about why you would do this. I guess the process. So, and this by no means, there are so many ways you can do this. And so I caveat this next bit with, this is not financial advice. This is just what I'm seeing happening in the industry at the moment. And, and I'm just 
sharing what we're doing in our clients' business and what I'm seeing happening in the industry at the moment. So typical process would be if you're a founder and you're wanting to go out there and get and to start the process of bringing in internal shareholders into your business. First things first is you would you would need to understand the benchmark for your business. Like you'd need to go out there and get your business valued. And as a side note, I recommend this to all of my clients, don't get your business valued by business brokers because they're incentivized to inflate the price of your business and to try and encourage you to sell your business because that's how they make their money by selling businesses. Find someone who purely does business valuations. So that's all they do. They value businesses day in, day out, and they are not swayed or incentivized to, you know, to inflate the price of your business. So the first things first is to get a valuation. What you want to do with that valuation then is start the start the conversation with that next generation of shareholders. And again, this is what I'm seeing happening in the industry at the moment is that particularly like depending on whether the next generation of shareholders have cash or not or have access to money or not, they like the idea of buying into a business, but then when the valuation gets put on the table in front of them, they're like, whoa, I can't afford that. Like that's way too much money. I was thinking like 10 grand and you're talking 100 grand or I was thinking 20 grand and you're talking 200 grand. So a lot of the times next-gen shareholders are quite uneducated when it comes to understanding how much businesses can be worth and how much they would need to find to buy into your business. So a really, and I guess we've got to step back here, like bringing on next-gen shareholders is a long-term play. It is a long-term big picture strategy. And if we go for the short-term gains or the short-term wins, you know, this is not going to work out. So the, the people that you want to approach and offer shareholding within your business have to be the right people like they have to be people that you want to grow old with they have to be people that you want to share the highs and the lows and the ups and the downs and that sort of thing and like I know there's a there's a difference between being a director and difference between being a shareholder like typically shareholders don't get too much involvement or say within you know the running of your business if they're they're a director obviously they do but obviously shareholders get to vote on the on the overall board of the business and that sort of stuff in terms of the shareholders constitution. But typically, you know, I'm working with and we're talking about small businesses here. So someone that you're offering next-gen shareholders to has probably been someone that's been in your business forever. You know, they're like a brother or a sister to you and you want to see them do well. And of course, you're going to consult them on most business decisions. So fundamentally, they have to be the right person. They have to be, they have to have the values. They have to have that drive. Can they add value to the business? Are they the right person? Can they bring in their own work? Could they build a a business unit or build a team somewhere else in the state or around the country? But they have to be the right person. And once you've satisfied yourself that they are the right person, then it's about taking a long-term approach and a long-term play. And so I'll give you an example. So a particular client that I'm working with at the moment in boardroom you know, they're going through the process of offering next-gen shareholders ownership in the business and they've just had the business value. And the business has come back significantly higher in terms of valuation than what anyone could have anticipated. So massive win for my client. Like he's going, wow, this business is worth a way more than I thought it was. But what that translates to is, you know, the next-gen shareholders are going, I can't, I can't afford to buy into that business. And so that's when as a business owner, you have that quandary around, okay, well, this is a valuation. And if you want 10% of the business, 10% of X equals Y. So can you go and find Y? Otherwise you can't buy into the business. And so that's traditionally how you do it. But I just want you to think about like, is that approach a bit short-sighted? Like this is a longer term play in the business. And so you can offer those shares to that next gen shareholder at whatever value that you want. If you want to offer a 50% discount on the value of your shares, you can do that. If you want to gift those shares to that person, you can do that. If you want to offer a a 20% discount, you can do that. Because I want you to think about what's the benefit and the long-term play of that person sitting around the table or that person being an incentivized shareholder in your business. Will that 20% discount or 50% discount on 
shareholding here and the size of your business here mean that they buy in and they become motivated, inspired, and they help you triple or quadruple the size of your business, way more than what you could have done on your own. And so that's why I want you to think about, are they the right person? Are they the right fit? But let's play a long game here and make sure that we're not going, well, that's the price. It's being valued. Do you want it or not? I can't afford that. Well, see ya. Let's not let that make us short-sighted and take away from the longer-term opportunity of bringing that person into the business. So as I said to my clients today, like fundamentally you've got to work out, are they the right person? And if they are and you want to grow old with this person and you want them to be part of the fabric and they're going to help you take your business to heights and places that you could never do on your own, well, then it's about finding a deal or structuring a deal that really works for both parties. And so that's the first question you've got to answer. And then the second question is, all right, well, what's what's the deal? How do, how do we structure this? Is it 50% cash up front from you at an at a 80% discount on the shares? And, you know, over the next two years, the dividends that you would normally receive just get reinvested back into the business, so kind of like a business loan. Do you completely give them to gift them to that particular person and they're forever in debt to you? Side note, I always like, in next-gen shareholders to have some skin in the game, so some kind of monetary contribution. Even if it's 10, 15, 20 grand, at least they've gone to the bank, taken money out of their savings and are giving it to you. Because I think if you gift shares to people, the perceived value is not as high as it would be if they actually took money out of their own savings to invest in your business. But like the internal share valuation can be whatever you want it to be. Or sorry, the internal share structure and how you offer those shares can be whatever you want it to be because it's got to be about the long-term play and the long-term investment in your business. And so, like I said, you can structure that deal however you want. It's got to be right for you. I think there's got to be a little bit of hurt or um, not hurt, but a little bit of um, monetary transaction from the shareholder to you as an act of good faith and like I'm committed to this. But play the long game. If you can see the benefit in bringing this person on, Offer them a 50% discount, offer them a 20% discount, offer them a, a company loan, pay 50% up front and pay the rest off over dividends. Like make it attractive to get that person to bring buy into your business so that you two can go and you know conquer the mountain together. So I'll probably leave it at that team. There's a lot to kind of talk about on this topic. If you do want to talk more about this, happy to give me a call, shoot me an email. I'd love to kind of jam with you and have some ideas on this particular topic. But I think really. If you're going through this process, play the long game. Think about it long term. What's the best thing for you and your business long term? And then go that go out there and make it happen. So team, if you want to keep building your business on your own, obviously I have heaps of free resources like the YouTube channel, the website, podcast for you to keep building your business on your own. But if you'd like some help, if you'd like some help building an amazing business and to join an incredible community of business owners, I'd love to invite you to join our border and coaching program. So Everything we do in Boardroom exists and has been created to help engineering business owners build and grow their businesses. So if that's you, and if you'd like some help or so you're curious about Boardroom, just comment the word Boardroom below, uh, shoot me a message or shoot me an email with the word Boardroom, and let's have a chat about how I can help you build your business even faster. Have an awesome day.